Hello ladies and gentlemen, Teo here, back some more DC Day. As promised, I'm going to be suppressing the tattoo now and locking us into Cosme's route, so it's exciting stuff. Let's see uh, what we can do about this creepy ass scorpion thing. Suppress the tattoo. It was the only way. I didn't know if I could do it or not, but Sakurai had once managed to suppress my nigh uncontrollable destructive impulses. All I could do was imitate what she'd done. Sakurai was at a degree level 3, while I was at a degree level 2. It seemed impossible when I considered that, but it was likely that the tattoo had nothing to do with her on a nerve anyway. I detained the Yetzirah decree. Degree. Did I have enough power to beat the Scorpion Curse? That was the basic problem. Though it was impossible for Sakurai, considering that she was getting devoured from the inside out. Even an office like me could probably do it from the outside. Yes. I resolved myself. I put my left hand on top of my right, then placed them on the Scorpion tattoo. No. It was hot. Extremely so. I could feel the pulsing of the scorpion from my right hand on Sakurai's abdomen. Get out of my way. Move your hand. Do you want me to devour you? That malicious hint of a voice passed through my right hand, echoing in my skull. So it really was alive. <laughs> its fight was with me. I didn't know what it was, but I wouldn't have some scumbag butting in. This goddamn thing wasn't going to get away with a threat like that. I felt pain run through my right hand at almost the same time I had those thoughts. The crimson scorpion that had no been nothing but a flat 2D object up until then pinched my right pinky with its claws. I grimaced at the pain that reached all the way up to my bones, but it was no problem. Why else would I have used my right hand? I predicted it would resist in some occultish way, and there was no way such shoddy claws could have cut through the soul that dwelled in my right arm. I let it do whatever it wanted for about a dozen seconds or so, then when I felt the scorpion grow impatient and tired, I focused all my will. No, this was an order that allowed for no defiance. In other words, sleep. The claws let go of my finger, and the pulsing scorpion under my hand ceased its crawling. It seemed like I had pulled it off. I initially wanted to order the thing to vanish, but as distorted as it may have been, it was a being dwelling within Sakurai's body. I was afraid that if I made it vanish, it would have taken a few organs with it. That would have most likely been fatal to Sakurai, and certainly not the end that I wished for her. She was no longer in pain, her breathing slowly evening out in her sleep. Well, I figured I could relax for now. She'd saved me several times till now, albeit not exactly out of sheer goodwill, and I ended up overhearing several, several of her secrets. She might not have liked it, but with this, I considered my debt repaid. I wouldn't retreat, and Sakurai herself must have had her own goals too. If those ended up conflicting, we'd have no choice but to fight again. And if it came to that, then, I at, least, then at least I wanted to get all unnecessary debts out of the way now, so I wouldn't have any baggage later on. I hope she wouldn't get mad, or wake up. I placed her on my knees and wrapped the blanket around us, deciding to wait for morning to come. It was raining. A woman without an umbrella stood on the bridge, accompanied by a grotesque giant. It was Lisa Brenner and Tubal Cain. Instead of heading straight back after the battle of the club, they went to the bridge. The ocean echoed with the sound of pouring rain. It was hail. The temperature was dropping. <sighs> Lisa mocked herself, well aware that this would be nowhere near enough to wipe away her sins. She wanted to go somewhere devoid of people. Thus, she ended up here. She'd been betting that there would be few who had come to this place so late on such a rainy night. Indeed, there were no signs of anyone else. How long had she been there? She'd been exposing herself to the rain for a long time, her hair and clothes already soaked. However, she merely gazed at the, shine, at the shining city in the distance without paying mind to that sensation clinging to her skin. <sighs> She'd forgotten about it, even though it meant a certain girl's very important birthday. Or had she simply been trying not to think about it? She had feared, detested, and yet also waited the coming of that day. Inconsistent emotion whirls about in her heart. What was she thinking? What did she wish for? What was she doing here? Her job was over. She had completed her mission, followed her orders, and fulfilled her oath. The only thing left to do was to sit it out and wait. She had grown tired of waiting and hoping these past sixty years. Yet now that she would accomplished what she needed to do, all Lisa felt was fear, regret, and impatience. Would her wish be granted? Would everything she'd lost come back to her? Or would she end up losing something else in return? <laughs> Superhumans who lived for centuries often appeared in fiction. They were transcendental and left all ordinary worries and worldly desires far behind them. Lisa thought that was all a lie. She had lived over 90 years, lost nearly everyone from her generation, and butchered people by the scores. Yet in spite of that, she ironically felt no sense of transcendental enlightenment. Much like her aging had, st had stopped in her late 20s, her mind hadn't matured at all either, still that of a young woman. Ever since that time, she had simply gone with the flow, 
not knowing what to do, almost like an awkwardly spinning weather vane. A young child had called her a hypocrite, and she wouldn't deny it. She couldn't succumb to madness from her own will and desires, or build up a, f or build up a firm position like her peers did. She felt lost constantly. That sensation led to worrying. Those worries caused her to go with the flow. At this rate, others would simply keep on using her. Her words, laden with a hint of self-mockery, were aimed at the giant standing next to her. He was a soulless machine, a weapon. All she could do was laugh at the irony of him being controlled by yet another worthless puppet such as herself. Now that she thought about it, was it wrong to do what she did to save her? Is that what he felt? She wondered how the giant felt about her. But right as she was about to speak his true name. Surprised by the abrupt voice from behind her, Lisa turned around to face its source. How's it going, buddy? Kristoff, the Divine Vessel. The priest addressed Lisa by her real name, a favor the nun returned by doing the same. Trifa stroked his chin as he walked toward, or rather right past, Lisa. She didn't need it. Besides, it made no sense for him to thank her. Normally, she would have voiced those opinions. However, どうも。he voiced his answer casually, still standing before the silent giant. The priest's towering frame was over 190 centimeters tall, yet, he look yet still he looked no more than a child next to Cain. With an even shorter Lisa next to them, the picture resembled a cartoonish composition with no sense of scale. Oh, Though Kane couldn't move if Lisa was dead, Trifa was still quite calm in the face of that mass of violence and destruction. Lisa felt indescribable chills down her spine when she noticed the look on Trifa's face. Just as Kay had said, Kane was undoubtedly the strongest weapon in the Obsidian Round Table's current armory, with Bay coming in second. She could declare that with certainty. But this priest, his powers she couldn't gauge or even understand. Contrary to his kind and fragile appearance, the oppressive and wicked presence silently emanating by the man felt far from normal. Though they'd known each other for a long time, Lisa had only tr seen Trifa this far up close a few times in the past. As such, there was a fact about him that she had nearly forgotten, one that she had dismissed as her imagination or a mere misunderstanding. Valeria Trifa, the Divine Vessel, was not the strongest of the Obsidian Round Table, but he was the most dreaded. Just then, the priest stopped looking up at Cain and turned back to Lisa. Oddly enough, the wicked aura that lingered about him had vanished. And they're doing a really good job of getting me hyped up for finding out what the hell Trifa's deal is. Like, I want to get I want him to get into a fight with someone. I want him to get in a fight with someone really badly. Lisa spoke in the calmest voice she could muster. 
まだ彼を使いたがるの手が足りないというわけでもないでしょうねうーんそれについては順序を追ってまずはあなたの悩みのことをリサ・レイズのアイブラウトリーファーズアティテュード Though he was talking, it sounded more like the, the priest was asking for permission to complain to her. However, he paid no heed to her and continued. Anata no nayami, sono mayoi, kuchi ni sezu tomo wakarimas. Watashi ni wa tsuma mo kodomo mo imasen ga, sore ni kawaru mono nara itashi iru. Daiji de shou shi, daiji des. So a kakegae no nai nukumori da. Tato e akki rasets to iware rumi demo. 我々とて人の心は持っている故にあなたが抱くその苦悩胸に迫るほど理解できますそも葛藤の根源は子を抱くために子を殺す矛盾が大きすぎてやりきれないだから選択できずに流される当たり前ではないですか我らは正しく似た者同士だリザ私もまたあなたと同じくテレジアの幸せを願っているあなたは For a moment, Lisa had a hard time understanding what the priest was talking about Wishing for Teresia's happiness Indeed, that was correct, however it あなたはハイドリ卑怯をあの方は我々ごときの占領など意にも返しはしませんよ。復讐領閣下もまた同じ。彼らを自分の物差しで測るのはおやめなさい。愚行な上に意味もない。あのお二人にかかればすべてどうでもよいと言われて終わりだ。でも。聞きなさい、リザ。シュライバー教にマキナ教。あの二人もやはり気にはしない。一方は画集の虜でもう一方はそもそも思考すらしていないまあザミエル教あの方だけは少々面倒でありますがそれもまた幸運なことに万一彼女の出陣が起きたとしてもいい取引材料を見つけましたとはいえおそらく今の調子なら必要ないと思いますがねあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっ Named characters so far. Like, I think there only have been two named characters that have died so far, assuming Lisa is dying here Lisa and Spine. And those are both Trifa. Trifa is like racking up quite the body count here. The priest caught her falling body as though he were embracing her, then spoke in a voice laden with affection. <laughs> これから先起こる未来あなたは知らぬ方が身のためだ<笑> Her vision grew blurry Blood gushed out of Lisa as her immortal body began to crumble The annihilation of an apostle carried out with one bear's hands One's bare hands There were only two members of the obsidian round table who could pull that off Machina and Valeria Trifa In her confusion and despair It hit Lisa again that it was undoubtedly the priest Her comrade Would cause the situation and was sending her body towards death's embrace. Valeria, you are dead. I will not be able to save you. And you will be able to save me. And you will be able to save me. And you will be able to save me. Again, they're like. Again, they're like introducing magical bullshit and they're not explaining what it is. Like. Can't just do that. Like, I want to know what this Ark of the Covenant thing is now. <laughs> And it's probably gonna be like another 40 hours before I find out. She sensed a terrible contradiction in his words. There was no way he could. 
あなたと私は同類だが決定的に違うところが一つある共に惑い悩み揺れに揺れ苦しいほど葛藤するそれは確かにそうでしょうだがしかし私は行動に移すのです何度でも何度でも失えば取り戻す取り戻してまた奪う不毛であろうが矛盾であろうが私はそれをためらわないリザあなたは優しい人だこの狂った天秤には耐えられないしテレジアとはかりにかけて私が選んだものはすなわち The priest dared not say the rest. He merely pulled his arm out while still holding onto the nun's heart. Sayonara, Liza Brenna. Sayonara, Waga Itoshiki Doho. Anata wa watashi ga kirai de shou ga. Watashi wa anata ga suki de shita yo. Terejia ga musume nara. あなたは妻であり妹だったと言われたところで迷惑千万でしょうがねこれは偽りのない真実ですですから away, あなたの遺産は私がもらい受けましょう Uh-oh. That's bad. ほうやはり思った通り彼女が朽ちてもこれは消えぬリサ・ブレンナーズ・アンナー、The Terrible Mask upon the face of that wretch of a giant remained intact これが残っている限り多少精度が落ちたところで他の者にもカインは使えるそして何より The priest stared intently at the brusque lump of iron wielded by the giant then sounded a laugh カインの処置はお好きなようにと確かに昔言いましたがまさかこう来るとは思いませんでしたよリザ私が憎いですかマレウスのところへでも行けばよい。彼女ならば今のあなた、従前とはいかぬまでも、使用してくれるでしょう。私はこれから、リザを弔わなければいけません。Sounds ominous. Cain proceeded forward in complete silence, his will to resist fierce enough to rend the very bedrock beneath his feet. Feeling the giant's stare on his back, Trifa too began his gate forward, ever ahead. Clutching his hands behind his back was Lisa's still beating heart. I'm beginning to suspect that Trifa is like not a hundred percent there upstairs. Caressed by the touch of ice cold rain, two swastikas open in a single night. I mean, I guess if they want to get eight by the end of the story, this is what they have to do, right? They have to accelerate the pace, the pace pretty dramatically. Like, we're 20 hours in and we're not even 
at the end of the first the first route, right? We just finished like locking in the route. And presumably there's gonna be stuff that happens after Hydrix shows up. So Best uh best start getting rid of them them Nazis. Because that is that is the fastest way to open up swastikas, right? Like you can either go through an extended scene where they kill ugh, 300 people, or you can just kill one Nazi, right? And the, the Nazi killing is much more efficient. This is what, number four? I kind of lost track, but I think this is number four. So we're halfway there. With this, their crusade was now half accomplished. Oh, yeah. Man, I'm so good at counting. Enraptured by the sweet pain, the priest laughed as he shed crimson tears, rivulets of blood pouring from his stigmata. Rip those two. Uh, Obsidian Roundtable members in Shambhala, 9 of 13. Interesting that they're still counting the dead people. I guess I, I already knew that from Spine, but still. Swastika's 4 out of 8. And then, uh, is there anything new and exciting here? Babylon is, uh... Babylon is Lisa and is dead. Cain is a zombie. And is not dead. Or, I mean, he is dead, but you know what I mean? We still don't know who Sonenkind is, but that's the, the last of the, uh... The unknowns, right? Uh, Berlikingen, Hrodvitnir, and Samael are the, uh, the three, like, commanders. Mephistopheles is obviously Goldilocks. And, yeah, it's more or less all the, all the information we have to derive from here, so. Chapter 7, Death Indra, end. The day mark, that day marked quite possibly one of the worst mornings, mornings in Kasumi's life. <sighs> she washed her face and woke herself up, then followed it up with a filling breakfast. At any rate, it was morning, so she figured she'd go for a change in mood by heading to school like a good student. Or so she thought, but... <laughs> good morning. I am currently mad as hell. Ever since her childhood, Idiot 1 and Idiot 2 had always left her... had always left her out of everything, have fun on their own, paying no attention to how irritated, pissed, and worried she ended up. They seriously hadn't changed one bit since those days. Yep, she was pissed. Pissed to hell and back. That idiot went missing all day yesterday and had yet to come back. But what she truly couldn't let slide was how she took some complete stranger of a girl with him. In fairness, she can turn into a magical guillotine and you can't. It wasn't like she liked that fool or anything. She totally does. Not fooling anybody. Except maybe yourself, but I doubt even then. She was just venting her feelings as her guardian of sorts. Yeah, that was it. She felt like she was going to cry at the memories of how ungrateful sh he had been lately. She turned to the empty ad adjoining room and kicked the wall, then quickly changed into her uniform. But she didn't feel like going to school in the least. She'd get ready and go search the whole city like she did yesterday. She realized it was a bit stalkerish of her, but that was that scumbag's fault for going off without saying a thing. She didn't care if he got a girlfriend or was busy two-timing. She simply wished he could be asked to at least say something in advance. It made her feel like chopped liver when he wouldn't even bother to tell her stuff like that. No, not quite. She wasn't crying. She wasn't lonely at all! Resisting the urge to stomp her feet, Kasumi left the room. She sprung open the door, looked out in the clear, mustered all her frustration into her throat, and... <laughs> I mean, in fairness, your sample size is two, and but I guess I guess that's all that's all I have to say on that matter. Like, given that the two guys you know are Ben and Shido, yeah, you're right. They're they're idiots. You uh, you do not have good luck. Your your taste in men is perhaps dubious at best. Wait, when did Ellie show up? Oh right, we were kidnapping her. That was the plan. We were gonna kidnap Kasumi. It was gonna be hilarious. Hey, uh, and who exactly was this unexpectedly intruding intruder? The intruder suddenly pressed a black rectangular object to her stomach, which then proceeded to emit sparks. Please don't mod your stun guns. That's how you get people killed. What was that? What the hell kind of manga storyline had Cosme gotten herself into? Well, 
ってほら、かわいいし。Isn't chloroform like actually like. Isn't like it really, really bad to use on people? Like, not that I'm advocating that you use stun guns on people, but I think that's less harmful than chloroform. Don't, don't quote me on that, though. It's not like I've looked this up. It's not like I've kidnapped people, as far as I'm willing to admit on the internet. I kind of weakly greeted a person with a stun gun during their first meeting. She tried to voice that thought into words, but it was too late. Chapter 8 Pied Piper. Uh, should I be concerned? Should I be concerned for the children? Because as I recall, that story doesn't end well for the children. I woke up to find myself faced with an unfamiliar ceiling. Oh, yeah, I did end up staying over here in the club last night, didn't I? I solely recalled the events of the night before as I looked up at the ceiling. Sister Lisa showed up. I fought that cane monster. And then my head was in such a daze that my thoughts kept going in rather roundabout ways. The air conditioning probably wasn't working, as the room was cold as hell. Judging from the fact that the lights weren't on either, it appeared the electric electricity had yet to be fixed. That makes sense, given that there was a giant zombie wrecking your shit and shooting at lightning. Ling, ohayo. Good morning. Suddenly, I heard someone greet me. It was a clear and pure voice that echoed all the way to the core of my being, a voice I recognized. This wasn't the first time it had greeted me like this upon waking. I turned my head away from the ceiling to the side. Mary was sitting on the floor, staring at my face. Seeing her caused my thoughts to spring into gear. She appeared in her physical form, fully materialized before me while wearing the same old go gothic Lolita outfit Cosmia had given her. How did that make any sense? I tried to come up with an answer, but ended up drawing a blank. My mind then grew clear and clear until it finally addressed it to reality. I sat up and greeted her. Mary produced a gentle smile as she stood up and sat next to me. The warmth lingering about her felt soothing to my frozen body. I combed my bed hair with my hands as I thought about what had happened. Man, I sure had gotten myself into quite a mess. Just because I'd only recently woken up didn't mean I couldn't see what was around me. <laughs> oh, hello. How's it going? Uh, fancy meeting you here. What an odd coincidence. <laughs> Something was right in front of me. A certain someone was sitting on the sofa across from me with a foul look on her face. Well, it wasn't like I expected this morning to be all that rosy anyway. But that didn't matter now. I heaved an exasperated sigh and decided to say something to move the situation along. She gave me a dull, unimpressed sounding reply. No, seriously, she gave me such a refreshingly grumpy reply that I felt amazed. Last night was my choice. I wasn't doing it for gratitude to begin with. Mary kept staring at us with a blank expression, but I ignored her for the time being and tried asking a simple question. Huh? The whole situation felt stupid, but it was a mystery as to why she didn't try and attack me in my sleep. She had just admitted to not feeling indebted to me in the slightest, so she shouldn't have had any problems with that. Sakurai shrugged. それに今は私だって万全じゃないおかげさまでだいぶ良くはなったけどね she placed an odd emphasis on the thanks to you and major idiots parts. Mary, ah, so that's why. すごいの持ってるのね、藤井君。形成できる魂なんて初めて見た。もらいもの。おい、もうやめろ。Sakurai probably had a sense of what Mary was, but the way she talked got on my nerves. I didn't want her calling Mary amazing or a gift like she was some kind of rare item. Sakurai then sighed as she thought, as though she'd figured out she made a slip of the tongue when she guessed my thoughts. Now was my turn to be confused. Yeah, but then it wouldn't be funny. 
In other words, she didn't understand why I saved her. Well, I thought I did. In my defense, my plan was to kill you back at the bridge when the game gave me when the game gave me the option to, but the guide I was following to get the right endings told me not to. So that's my excuse. I don't know what men's excuse is. True, I did feel that way when we fought on the bridge in the ocean. Also, can we just take another minute to, like, appreciate how mind-bogglingly stupid that jacket looks? Like, it has everything. It has, like, asymmetry with, like, the, the one lapel over the front, right? It has a big-ass hole in the, in the chest area, so you can show your midriff with a shirt and a jacket on. It has, like, zippers on the arms for no particular reason. It has, like, fur around the neck because, god, why not? It has, like, fucking belt strapped to the bottom. What is going on? Who would willingly purchase this item of clothing? It looks so stupid! What was the, what was the name of the artist, uh, G. Yusuke or something? I'm convinced he's insane. Or she, I don't actually know what gender they are. But I'm convinced they're insane. I had plenty of things in my mind over here. I honestly didn't feel like explaining it to her, but considering how adamant she was, I figured this could potentially be a card of sorts. After giving it some thought, I finally spoke up. Huh? Oh, hey, ease up on the evil eye. Yeah, that, that part makes sense. Go back to the part about her taking a bath or something. Besides, there was too much I didn't know about these guys. Having a chat with Sakura, I would be keen in getting information on them. Though it seemed her wound had mostly healed up, she reeked of blood. I honestly didn't want to be in the same room as her. That alone is why I asked her to go and wash up, but... <laughs> she was giving me one hell of a glare, her shoulders trembling slightly. <laughs> Sakurai stood up and headed straight for the door. I was being honest, I figured it was obvious she wouldn't feel good unless she took a bath. So why did you get mad at me? I didn't get it. I was trying to be nice, but whatever. I tilted my head in confusion. Don't guillotines, like, rust if you, uh, put them in water? Like, not that I own a guillotine or anything, or, like, know about the proper maintenance of such, but I feel like it's made of metal, you're probably not supposed to put it underwater for any sort of, for any sort of, like, extended period of time. I didn't really mind, but she wasn't asking to take a bath with Sakurai, was she? It didn't seem like Mary had metabolism, so it had nothing to do with her. That's kind of creepy. It wasn't exactly a characteristically feminine scent, but if I had to say, she smelled of sunflowers. Once I said that... Yeah, that was really funny. I thought I had as much tact as the next guy, but she didn't seem to think so. Was that really it, though? She seemed constantly ready for battle, so I didn't think her the type to care about personal appearance. Yeah, no way in hell. Just when I said that, My cell phone began to ring. I picked my jacket off the floor, pulled the phone out of one of its pockets, and answered it to see what was going on. 
お水飲みかお前かよ。Why the hell would he call me when he was in the same building? I wish I knew what was going on in that head of his. お前も今お目覚めかうんああ、ついさっき目覚めたよ。お前もそうかあ、そんなもんだな。違うじゃん。そんでまあ、寝起き早々、お前に苦情っつうか、言いたいことがあってたな。苦情 ?But what? I had a shitload of things to complain to him about, but I couldn't for the life of me think about what he had to complain to me. Shido gave an exaggerated sigh over the phone. Oh, that's pretty funny. Oh. Well, uh, he had my sympathy at least. Sakurai wa, ima shower a bit in the So you got to. まだ復旧作業は 100% いってないけどそれくらいは終わったみたいだなエリーのやつどうせろくに寝てねえぜそうかじゃあ悪いことしたかな So she pulled an all nighter while we slept like logs? I mean we were exhausted and everything but I still felt a bit guilty about it ねその本庄はどこ行ったんだ今から寝るのかあ,あ何言ってんだよそもそもお前の要望だろうがはだからバカすみだよバカすみあいつらチリに行ってきたあ、oh. oh, yeah, forgot about that starting today it was too dangerous for her to just go off to school しかし本庄大活躍だな後で例でも言っとくかいや別にいいんじゃねあいつそういうの鬱陶しがるしそれよりよ今こっちはこっちで面白いことになってんだけど面白いこと I simply responded with a question of my own with no idea what he, he was talking about. Following some sort of chattering noise, Shido spoke up again. Okay, so there are two possibilities here. One is Nazis. The other is there's a, there's a camera in the shower room and Shido really wants to share with us. Could go either way, honestly. Huh? Though confused, I reluctantly did as Shido said to shut him up. Damn it! I hate it when I'm right! I'm always right, and I hate it when I'm right. <laughs> um, what the hell was I looking at? <laughs> Fucking Shiro! I also like how the uh, the battle background music is playing. It uh, It's done that a couple times now, right? Where there's like... Comedy situations. Where it plays the battle background music for comedic effect. I, I appreciate it every time. Did he seriously just... This feels illegal. <laughs> or at the very least deeply immoral. Probably illegal. Yeah, I'm with men on this one. I screamed at the top of my lungs. Uh, Fucking Mary! You're not helping! What the hell was up with this ridiculous turn of events? What, is he gonna like turn off the hot water or something? He was pure literal shit. No, lower than shit. Fucking Shiro! I mean, it is established that this is in character for him. Like, we had the whole episode with the uh, the mole on Kasumi's boobs. But, like, come on. I felt like I was about to fall right there. First the Kasumi mole incident, then this. The guy just kept committing these crimes one after the other, despite normally looking like he wasn't even that, all that interested in girls. 
もっと健康的な反応しようぜ見せ物としては結構いいだろ場合によっちゃ金取れるんじゃねえかこれ God fucking damn it This is why we can't have nice things It's all Shido's fault Like I love him but he's a jackass そうか Fuck I didn't feel like a girl at all so what did he even mean there? あれマジで強がってるわけじゃなくて I wonder if our reaction is different on uh on Sakurai's route to this scene, assuming the scene still happens. I guess we're gonna find out in uh, you know, fifteen hours or so. So da yo. God he was persistent. Though Mary was watching with keen interest. When I thought about it calmly, I realized none of this mattered. All I had to do was shut off the monitor. ケースはもうお前もアホなことやってないで少しは今後のこととかもああなんだってもっと別アングルとかいろいろ見たいジーズスファキンクライストだからな I couldn't help but want to vent my frustration at this annoying idiot I then decided to choke to soak his sponge like brain with everything I had 俺は断じて桜井の裸なんか見たくもねえ So Based on the uh, the filter they put on his voice just then, I assume that was broadcasted directly into the shower room. My angry shout echoed all across the building. Wait, echoed? <laughs> At the same time, Sakurai's voice, trembling with anger, came echoing through the room via a nearby speaker. A voice that sounded more like a curse from the very depths of hell, each syllable making my very entrails contract. <laughs> So, I have a suggestion. This, in this suggestion involves running away and very fast. The other suggestion is well, we were planning on killing her anyways. Now feels like a real good time to start working on that plan. <laughs> She then smashed the surveillance camera. Shit had officially hit the fan. My prospects of surviving the next hour suddenly grew a lot dimmer. More importantly, though, there was a certain someone I felt like strangling to death right now. Uh, yep, that guy over there. He was in for one hell of a strangling, so he had best prepare himself. Toma, so na sasai na jare ai wa oitoite da na. Ore wa omae ra ga suki da. Sakurai punched the table I kicked flying straight at Shido, but he dodged while casually humming to himself. <gasps> Mary gave us an applause. Uh, you're right. Our friend group includes Shido and you and Kasumi. Mary's okay though. Your friend group includes a bunch of Nazis, so yeah. Needless to say, Sakurai and I were in rather foul moods. Even if we weren't, Kasumi would be arriving shortly. I fear to imagine what disaster would unfold if that human bomb were to be thrown into this situation. Oi, Sakurai. So while I knew it was pointless and wouldn't work, I decided to address her. Wait, please don't tell me you're actually going to try and, like, follow up on your bullshit from earlier? Oh my god. Why? Just, like, admit that you told a lie, tell her that you and uh, Sakurai are not in fact going out, and then we can all just move on with our lives. As opposed to this bullshit, where we are about to experience a subpar sitcom drama. <laughs> Sakurai gave me a frigid look as if to imply she failed to see the point of my statement. No, no, wait for it, wait for it. <laughs> Well, you see. Mary couldn't read the mood. Shido would just screw with things for the heck of it, as would Honjo. As for, me, as for Kasumi, well, she was Kasumi. I was extremely reluctant to do it, but Sakurai was the only one I could reasonably team up with. I was about to point out that the feeling was mutual, but I held my tongue. But she really was an irritating one. Why was she just glaring at me all the time? What did I do to piss her off? 
What happened earlier wasn't my fault. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I don't believe you even a little bit. This time, it was Sakurai who kicked the cabinet next to her into the air, and I redirected an ashtray to Shido with a quick swift kick, though he dodged that just as easily. <laughs> Unlike me, who had more or less become immune to that idiot's antics, Sakurai appeared to be at her, to have been at her limit, shoulders lightly trembling. Well, uh, I still had a lot to ask her. That was the whole reason I looked after her, so just allowing her to leave like this would be putting the cart before the horse. Still, annoying as it was, it seemed she mostly recovered, so if we were to stop her, I'd likely have to resort to force. Honestly, that would have been a rather troubling turn of events in this situation. I didn't know when Cosme would arrive, so I couldn't get violent or let her do the same. Well, I said I, like, I was always right, and I'm very glad to be wrong right here, because back, uh, I don't know, five minutes ago or so. Uh, when Kay was like, what exactly do you want me to do? I thought Ren was about to ask her, so I might have told her that we were going out, so could you please pretend that that's true? That's what I was expecting to happen, but it didn't, and as a result, I'm extremely grateful. Fujiku,なんかいろいろ考えてるようだ。いつも行き当たりばったりなんだから。いや、こいつはいろいろ考えて頑張れば頑張るほど、事態が悪い方向に転がるっていう軽有な才能の持ち主でだな。ほっとけ
なあり後ろのやつらのカンペは見るな<笑> How about you join us too? I could dig that, Honjo's card. Ah, but I guess you'd fill the room with the stink of kendo equipment. Yeah, forget I said anything, Shido's card. But doesn't Nen have a stench fetish? Honjo's card. True, Fuji does have a perverted side to him, Shido's card. He was a total animal the last time we did it. He even bit my arm, Honjo's card. Ah, remembering all that made me kind of restless now. Um, Ayase, what would you say if we took some time together in private? Shido's card. W what? But I don't swing that way! W wait, stop! Not in front of Nen! Honjo's card. Uh, but we live here! Shido's card. We? FYI, you're only freeloading at my place! Honjo's card. <laughs> I mean, I was having fun. No, not the big scary lady again! Honjo's card. You scare me when you're angry, mommy! Shido's card. Now, now, calm down, Kasumi. I thought doing something about Sakurai over there would be of a higher priority before she killed someone. まさかあんたら私に内緒でずっと連絡取り合ってたんじゃないでしょうねいやそれはないレントあったのは一昨日の話だ本当に本当に私の目を見てこうかつかい夜のバカタバコ臭いいやそれは本当にそれは本当に私
I was against that plan from the beginning. I uh, advised and against it, and as a result, I claim no responsibility for what's about to happen. <laughs> I wrestled with a sudden impulse to tear all my hair out. え、あ、違う。え、てい I mean, that's your fault though, right? That's that's not my fault. I that was not my idea. Would someone please shut her up already? 先生、レン君がまた物に動じてないって顔でぐるぐる言い訳考えてます。uh oh. Kasumi suddenly sat cross legged and slapped her knees, as if she was enjoying something. What Yakuza film was she trying to imitate there? If I remember correctly, she was trying to get us to say that we love Sakurai. Oh boy. The last time we talked about this- wait, surely she didn't mean- Yeah, that's not happening. Please God, no. I knew it. Love. God, <laughs> fucking Shiro, you're not helping! DVD. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, nothing, please. You can, uh, you're, you are the only sane person in this room right now, Mary. Ah, wait, there was no need for Mary to force herself into this. I'd really had it with them. Besides, Honjo had constantly had been constantly playing with her phone while causing these disruptions. What the hell was she doing stirring up things in her spare time if she wasn't even all that into it to begin with? But then, just as I was seriously considering protesting, uh, okay. she suddenly thrust her fist into the air for some reason. Everyone looked at her. Honjo grinned and showed Kasumi her cell phone. Alright, so if I had to guess, my guess is that uh, Honjo has successfully gotten admin access to the school's homepage and has declared the day off so as to keep people away from the school so as to prevent somebody going on a murder spree at the school and uh, make another swastika. That's my guess. Let's see if I'm right. Uh, I took a peek at Honjo's cell phone only to be stunned. The following was written there. Due to concerns regarding a serial killer still on the loose, as well as our intention to prioritize the safety of our students, steps have been taken to temporarily close the school. Too good if you ask me. She clearly used some sort of trick. <laughs> Judging from the impressed look on Sakurai's face and Shiro's smirk, they were clearly thinking the same thing as me. Did Honjo alter the school's homepage? It was obviously nothing compared to hacking into the UN's database, but it's felt unbelievable that she did all this with her phone alone. Sure, why not? Though I cursed at her, I owed her big time. I felt myself honestly welling up with gratitude. As for why... I would have never been able to restrain her this easily, no matter what I did. But being the honest girl she was, she believed, without suspicion, that the school had closed. Or rather, she didn't have a reason to doubt it. Most everyday people wouldn't even consider that someone their age was capable of that kind of hacking. I would definitely have believed it myself, albeit with some suspicion, if I didn't know Honjo's skills. So... Uh, 
んじゃかすみお前あいつと一緒に俺らの飯作ってくれよえちょっとそんないきなり言われても悪い頼むよ You're all dicks <笑> Kasumi made a discontent face but わかったわかりましたよとにかくご飯作るからいろいろ話はその後でじゃあくすみちゃんこちらへどうぞあうんっていうかなんであなたが私の名前を I mean, I think generally when you kidnap somebody, you tend to know their face first. Like, unless you're in like one of those cliche like white vans and you're just picking up kids off the side of the road. Generally, when you kid kidnap somebody, you have an agenda in mind, right? And it's, it's difficult to have an agenda if you don't know who it is you're kidnapping. So, generally, you do some amount of research beforehand. I, I promise I've never kidnapped anybody. Eddie, yo. Eddie. Yo, that's good, eh? Um, ah, so. I don't know if you should call her feeble minded or just good natured, probably both, but she, despite voicing a few complaints, obligingly followed Eddie out of the room. In any case, I had better think about what to do next. Yeah, it really was only for now. One of the problems had been cleared. There were still a ton of issues remaining. そうね、もうできるだけ茶番はうんざり。I did get as much information out as her as I could. Just because we had to let her guards down here for the time being didn't mean Sakurai's nature had changed. I stopped holding on to strange delusions the moment I saw the cold look in her eyes. The talk we had earlier, like friends at school fooling around, it was all just an illusion. I felt bad things would happen if I didn't keep forcing myself to believe that she and I were enemies. And that seems like a.、Uh... A reasonable stopping point, and the screen faded to black and everything, so back tomorrow with、uh, the rest of this thrilling domestic, god, whatever you want to call this mess.